and BBC One. Welcome to the thing that's all over. I'm Gary's team as a comedian and West Ham fan who comes from a football-loving area of Essex. In fact, round his way, you have to apply for planning permission not to have a Sky satellite dish. <laughs> Bill Jupiter. <laughs> With David and Lee is an Olympic silver medalist and uh, former gladiator who quit the show when she realised it was only a matter of time before Ulrika got round to her. <laughs> Sharon Davis. <laughs> We open with our excuses round, which deals with the unconvincing reasons given by sportsmen for their equally unconvincing performances. Gary, Rory and Phil, we hark back to football's glory, glory days, the early 90s, when Man United had failed to win the title for 25 seasons running. Here we are United, being especially rubbish against Southampton in 1992, a season when they handed the title to Leeds after losing three of their last four matches. But, inevitably, it wasn't their fault. The person the Man United faithful blamed was none other than Rod Stewart. What you want to know is, why was the famously mean Scotsman to blame? Gary's team. Did they blame Rod Stewart, rock star, because um, Bob Geldof wasn't available to take the blame? <laughs> <laughs> Footballers are known for their love of uh, leggy blondes, aren't they? And uh, <laughs> and, we'll and so, is, <laughs> so is Rod. I mean, was he was he tapping on their wives or something? <laughs> was he what? Tapping their wives, Lee. Tuppy. It's a sexual term. You wouldn't be familiar with it. <laughs> Isn't that when a manager rings? It's what people right? do with sheep, Lee, which you would be yes. familiar with. So. <laughs> what is the origin of the the word tapping? Bing Frank. Tupping. <laughs> <laughs> to tup is a rural term for sheep having sex. Gary. Tupping is when a manager rings a player from another club and tries to get him to his own club. Rory. Tup. <laughs> Verb. Intransitive. Someone who tups is a tupper. <laughs> <laughs> what you wear while you're tupping is tupperware. <laughs> Tupping is incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't it something to do with the fact he had concerts on the pitch and basically ruined it and they blamed the fact that the surface was spoiled? It's something correct like for three points. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here's Manchester United fan spokesman Southie to explain the nature of Rod's crime. In the summer of 91, United allowed Rod Stewart to play a concert on our sacred surf. The pitch was in a bad enough state as it is, even worse after. That's the reason why United lost the lead to Leeds. Thanks, Rod. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I can understand that a Rod Stewart concert at Old Trafford might have harmed the pitch and that it delayed some vital reseeding work. But what I can't understand is, how come that bloke had a Manchester accent? <laughs> <laughs> David Lee and Sharon, we take you back to this year's World Snooker Championships. Welshman Darren Morgan was busy thrashing world number one, Stephen Hendry, when all of a sudden, he started playing like this. <laughs> this time the man to blame apparently was Prince Nassim Hamed. So why was Naz held responsible for Darren Morgan's defeat? David's team? This is uh, very fortunate actually. <laughs> oh God. No. <laughs> I was actually I was actually there at that yeah. match. And you were uh, the cue ball. <laughs> Gary, you were two of the pockets, weren't you? <laughs> and were you actually there? No, of course I wasn't there, Nick. I was just pulling your plonker. Oh, right. <laughs> Nothing was there? Yes, he was. 
Uh, was he possibly he? next on the table? Winner stays on, so he's stuck his 20p down. <laughs> <laughs> he should do that with boxing, actually. That'd be brilliant, wouldn't it? Would he? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fantastic. <laughs> He's a little tiny bloke, isn't he? Wait, no, no, he's not that size. <laughs> well, I don't know, mate. Do you know what I mean? If he's a little tiny bloke, was he perhaps in Darren Morgan's pants doing some bag work? <laughs> well, if you had Frank Bruno in your pants, your bollocks would probably win. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, when you think about it, if you suddenly saw Frank Bruno in your pants, that'd be quite shocking, wouldn't it, really? Because how big would your pants have to be? <laughs> Tell us, Phil. <laughs> well, Frank, what do you think of conditions in the big fella's pants? <laughs> well, Harry, it's a little bit moist, but I don't mind it. <laughs> you know, you've got to start off with a laugh. It's like, huh, huh, huh. Going from there, go on. Oh, that's Elvis. Isn't that Elvis? <laughs> Come on. Right, that wasn't that. He's shouted something to Hendry, and he's put him off. Did he shout out to Hendry? Oi, Hendry, I've got big gloves. All your spots in one. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to give it to you. Oh, no, 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 no. In fact, Prince Nassim, who is a friend of Stephen Hendry's, actually turned up and put Morgan off in person. Here's Darren Morgan to explain, with the help of world super middleweight champion, Joe Calzaghi. I was 6-4 up on Stephen Hendry in the quarterfinals of the World Championships and in walked Prince Nassim with his silver puffer jacket on made him look just like a little spaceman. Into the front row of the press box he went and continuously put me off. I decide the end of that match, that was it with the queue and I've been in training ever since with Joe and I'm coming to get you, Naz. <laughs> Come on, Naz. So, at the end of that round, Gary's team have three points and so indeed do David's team. Thank you. Now, before we go any further... No, it's not true. Are you sure? Because mm. there have been rumours that Gary's going back to Japan <laughs> to play for Grand Pass 8. Is it definitely not true? He's you going might back be. to play for Spurs. Because no, there was a Grand Pass 8 fan on telly, and this was his reaction to seeing that Lineker might be coming back. OK, Sporting Block is our next round where the teams try to work out which two of their opponents are being economical with the truth and which one is being honesty itself. Gary's team, your subject is three times US Masters and three times Open champion Nick Faldo. This to be champion. Yeah. There you are. Nick Faldo burst into tears on TV when he was fined £50. Nick Faldo burst into tears on TV when his wife doesn't say which one, had an affair with Noel Edmonds. <laughs> Nick Faldo burst into tears on TV when someone teased him about his haircut. Shut it. <laughs> <laughs> so, did Nick get all weepy because he was fined 50 quid, someone poked fun at his hairstyle, or someone with a beard poked Mrs Faldo? <laughs> How low would you have to be in your life to turn around and null for a bit of comfort, wouldn't you? <laughs> Nick Faldo's Listen, he's wife. a very attractive man, and I want you to leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> that, that must have been a really great episode of Swap Shop. I wonder what Faldo got for her. <laughs> <laughs> what was your show and yours is that? 50 quid. Fine. Sharon, can I just say something Sorry. to you? When a bloke asks you a question, never reply 50 quid. <laughs> <laughs> you got fined 50 quid for being caught in the rough with an iron, did you say? <laughs> <laughs> it could be the Noel Edmonds one, couldn't it? Why don't we ask Mr Blobby? But which one? <laughs> Can you sit down? I'm running out of sunblock. <laughs> I think it's Sharon. There's something in my head that says he did cry once because he had a fine. OK, you say Sharon's right. Let's have a look to see if you are. Indeed, well done. <laughs> um, 
And just for our entertainment, let's see Nick Faldo blub. I don't know if the public can hear this. Couldn't you believe that Greg Norman and myself and Ken Brown have been fined £50 for slow play? Now, I, I believe on the telly that they said, you know, possibly today... <laughs> well, Nick, I'm sure I'm very sorry about that. <laughs> it's like an hour tune, wasn't it? That's all they needed in the background. <laughs> Only 50 quid for making golf last longer. They should bring back the birch for that. <laughs> David Steen, it's the Cameroon's most famous gold bagger for you, Roger Miller. Uh, Roger Miller organised a football tournament for one-legged players. <laughs> Roger Miller organised a football tournament for a cannibal tribe. Roger Miller organised a football tournament for pygmies. So, David's team, did Roger Miller organise a football tournament for monopeds, cannibals or pygmies? Did he organise a uh, football match for cannibals and then um, it went into extra time so it became a football match for one-legged players? <laughs> Yeah, forget the oranges. <laughs> you want one of his He's got a sweet left foot. Yeah, That's enough right. now. <laughs> <laughs> well, they have stock cubes in the bath at the end of it, do they? <laughs> <laughs> do you reckon if uh, cannibals play a pre-season friendly, they just lick? <laughs> <laughs> and then they have like the team meal after the game, you know, and they carry on the same terminology. Pass the salt over here, on my head. <laughs> You can imagine the chance, can't you, the football chance during the Cannibals game? No. Um, I'm going to try, you know, like, um, <laughs> <laughs> who's in all the pies? You're <laughs> 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 going home in a tasty casserole. <laughs> what happens though if the, um, the one-legged team win, actually? Do they get legless after they finish? <laughs> I mean, they can only have a knee up, can't they, really? They can't. <laughs> Who's got the pigmies? Pigmies? Well, I can't remember. Uh, uh, oh, 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 Rory. Rory. If a pigmy gets sent off, does he go for an early sink? <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what do you think on pigmies, really? <laughs> now, actually, we should get the audience. We'll, we'll take a vote, shall oh. we? <laughs> so, we're going for backup here. Uh, if you think it's pigmy, say yo. One, two, three. No. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> if you think it's cannibal, say yo. One, two, three. Looks like it's going for the one-legged team. If you think it's one-legged team, go, yo, one, two, three. Yeah! We kind of think it's the one-legged team. <laughs> no, 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 we think it's the pygmies. Oh, 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 no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, 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 yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Working-class people, take the notice, please. I couldn't shout loud enough to get that joke here. He wasn't going to let me have it. I'm staying here. Oh, I refuse to rejoin until I lead my people in a revolution. <laughs> Lee, Lee, when Lenin talked about joining the working classes uh, to attack people, I don't think he was talking about game shows. <laughs> oh, fair point. Yeah, right. <laughs> so you're going for pigmies on a, a unilateral decision then, are you? He's got food, Dave. Well, it's... To remind you of Lords. <laughs> <laughs> pigmies was Rory, you that's it, you're right. Scum. Yes. So, what's the matter with you lot? What's the matter with you lot? This in this bloke, he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> you scum. You just, just proves you cannot trust the electorate. You <laughs> can't trust. Them. So Rory was being honest for once. In 1993 in Cameroon, Roger Miller organised a football competition involving pygmies from all over the country. Apparently Miller got into trouble, and this is true, for jailing the players between games and allowing them no food. The pygmy tournament was a great success. Over 100,000 fans flowed in under the turnstiles. <laughs> so at the end of that round, David's team have six and Gary's team have six.
We crack on with our photo opportunities round where we show the teams a couple of dodgy looking publicity pictures and ask for an explanation. David's team, you're first. Take a look at this. That's former Scotland striker and top Sky Sports pundit Andy Gray dressed up in a tutu. But why? Uh, Sharon, did you used to swim the butterfly? I did, yeah. Does anybody here swim the butterfly? Uh, can you not believe that that stroke was based on drowning? You know what I mean? <laughs> What was the furthest you ever swam in a race? Oh, 800 metres. How long did that take you? Uh, eight, 8 minutes 40. Did you ever pee in the pool? <laughs> <laughs> Even in professional as well, you know, top class swimming, do you still have afterwards ice, gems and bovril? <laughs> <laughs> well, we always did that. <laughs> so, Andy Gray. Is this Andy Gray or is it ginger spice without the makeup? <laughs> been commentating on a 2-2 draw. <laughs> Can we have a clue? It's a sort of a tribute to someone else. There's a clue. A tribute to someone else. Uh, Ginger Rogers? Oh, hang on a minute. Does she? <laughs> <laughs> Is it anything to do with Freddie Starr? Well, I'll give like you it. three points for that. Yeah. Uh, three points, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the reason Andy Gray dressed up as a fairy was to demonstrate that he is Freddie Starr's biggest fan. Andy Gray was famous throughout his playing career for putting his head where other people stick their feet. In fact, he was once out for three months after trying to kickstart a motorbike. <laughs> <laughs> so, Gary, here's your photo. Uh, yes. Yes. Ali McCoist, Sharon Davis, a set of bagpipes and a pint of beer. But why? Right, see, because you've got Ali McCoist there, he's looking very, very disappointed. Was his horoscope that morning? Did it say, a lady will help you put something long and hard somewhere wet? <laughs> <laughs> and you, as you can see, he's obviously not best pleased with the no. results. <laughs> can the beer play the bad pipes? That oh, would be a crazy episode of Stars in Their Eyes. Tonight, Pint of Heavy, yeah. you are the Royal Scots Dragoon Guard! <laughs> <laughs> Amazing Grosh. <laughs> Mild of Kintyre. <laughs> We're on your specialist subject now. Yeah. Only, only Rudy would have a stock of bagpipes drinking beer. <laughs> <laughs> There's a coming under you, mark my words. Scottish National Pub Week. Is it called Pub Week? I should point well, actually, out. Actually, that's uh, a point. You're in the bloody fur, aren't you? Well, I'm intoxicated. I, I don't know. Frankly, I don't care what's happened in this game. I'm now armed with the information that uh, Sharon Davis will hold your bag when she's pissed. <laughs> I'm going to hand it across. Considering Sharon's in the photo, if you don't get it exactly, you don't get the bonus point. Well, that's not fair, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I think it was Scottish Pub Week. No. The answer is that the pair were promoting Glasgow Pub Week, oh. which is about as necessary as having an England Cricket Defeat Week. <laughs> <laughs> it's a week when the pubs are open all day and everyone in Glasgow goes out and gets blind drunk. And if you missed it, there are another 51 pub weeks. <laughs> And just in case you thought Glasgow Pub Week was the only good cause that Sharon was prepared to devote her time to, she's also been kind enough to endorse National Shark Week, National Chip Week, National Sausage Week, <laughs> National Cake Week, National Board Game Week, National Pelvic Week, and what I can only Ooh. presume is You're National Hand that. Transplant Week. <laughs> 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 There's no point in coming up there! It's a big one there. Oh, that's great. We're the only one. This, be this has been beamed out to 10 million people. Coming up there doesn't help. I can't believe you went out and bought a bra like that. <laughs> so at the end of that round, Gary's team have six points and David's team have nine. time now for our Field of Sportsman round where our regulars put on a pair of blindfolds and run their fingers over a couple of sporting celebrities. Gary and Rory, your films. It was Gary's birthday yesterday and he's got a new pair of Doc Martin boots. Look at these. They didn't come with instructions, unfortunately. They're magic yeah. boots that help him play <laughs> just like his old hero of yesterday. Gary's boots. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Now, Auntie, I've lost my boots and we've got a <laughs> match against Barnchester United. <laughs> Without his magic boots, will Gary win the game? <laughs> So, blindfolds on, you have 90 okay. seconds to tell us who's standing between you, and can we have our first mystery guest, please? <laughs> and your 90 seconds start now. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so it's not Sharon, then? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hello. Oh, oh. Got swollen hands. It happened to me for a while, actually, but... Uh... Oh, I know that Is chest. Is it ginger spice? Hang on, I'll just check. <laughs> no, it's frothy spice. <laughs> it's uh, a boxer. Oh, well done. It's going oh, no, to be a boxer or the elephant man, wasn't it? Because uh, Gary was saying earlier that uh, boxing's a puff game, didn't you, Gary? What a boring, Thanks, what a boring sport for puffs, you said. <laughs> but I like it. I think it's a good manly game. <laughs> oh, I wish I was a boxer. Feel free, mate. Go for it. Whack it. <laughs> <laughs> no, hang on. Yeah, but Rory, but you said you could have any of them. They're all tossers. <laughs> so you can hit Gary. He won't yeah. go down. It isn't a penalty. I didn't say that. Now we were talking about you, boxers mate, earlier. Sure. Can't, who were we talking about earlier? It was uh, not Nazi. It's not. It's not Prince. It's Robin it? Reed or Joe Calzaghe. Well done. Oh! Oh! <laughs> So, <laughs> gents, me and David, can you get to replace it, please? In a moment. Okay, can we have our second mystery guest, please? Sharon, yes. Last time we were doing this, you let me get up there and feel the personality. So if I go up and close my eyes... No. no. <laughs> go on, then. You can have five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> now, we don't so much need a name as a title. If you get the name, that's great, but it's a title we're looking for. Queen Mother. <laughs> Lord Young. David. David, you may be touching some things you've never touched before. <laughs> and uh, your 90 seconds start now. Let's Ooh. get Ooh. ready to rumble! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Dave, Dave, what? what about Do me a favour, go around the back, see if he's got a bicycle pump up his arse. <laughs> Oh, Dave, Dave, listen up, I don't want to worry you, but I've been over quite a bit so far and I haven't felt any clothing yet. <laughs> I'm a little bit worried. Oh. Nick, you're right about these things I haven't told you. Hang on, what? Is it, it's a bloke who runs my local kebab shop. <laughs> Jesus Christ! No, it's not him either. <laughs> he's got no oh shoes God. on. He's wearing his feet. He's uh. He's got no shoes on. Is it Gandhi? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, I Sandy Shaw, what's happened to you? <laughs> 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 All right, it's got to be, uh, Mr. 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 Ballum. Well, whatever it is, you'll certainly come in. Mr. Wayburn. Yes, Mr. Wayburn. Eddie Adams. And so, at the end of that round, Gary's team have nine points and David's team have twelve. We end.
And as usual, with the 2 2 wearing pygmy jailing name game, the winning team goes first, which is David's team at the moment. Sharon, could you pass those to Lee, please? Yeah. As many names as you can in the next 90 seconds. Starting now. Dark player. Eric Bristol? Correct. <laughs> uh, footballer, Chelsea, I think. Uh, little tiny bloke. Uh, Zola. No, little, little, little again. Smaller? Yeah. Eric and Ernie, more command. Wise. First oh, name. What's in that thing? Uh, Dick. <laughs> Dick. Dirty, <laughs> dirty, <laughs> dirty, dirty, dirty. No, not dirty, Dick. Dick. No, dirty. No. EastEnders, dirty. Den. 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 Is. Is. Right, correct. <laughs> right. Swimmer. Uh, swimmer. Swimmer. There's lots uh, of swimmers. I know there are. Too many for my liking. <laughs> Her surname. Her surname. First word, sec, last word of her surname is like a fortress, but it's not. It's oh, a hard castle, hard hard castle. Correct, <laughs> blonde, that was good. Uh, oh God. Uh, first name is uh, no. Second name is like something Cliff, a film actor. Something Cliff, something Cliff. Montgomery. Uh, correct. Yeah. Montgomery. Yeah. First name is uh, correct. There you go. You're very good at this, aren't you? Actually. <laughs> uh, first name is like James Bond. Uh, Connery. First name is. Sean. Sean. And second name is oh, I don't even know how to pronounce that. Uh, uh, finger in the. Dyke. Yeah. Yeah, is it? Right. Oh, blimey, that was handy. <laughs> <laughs> Hockey player, it's Connery again, first name. Oh, Second name, uh, Dania. Kill, kill, curly. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> How another, get quick? Another, <laughs> another swimmer, his surname is like the telescope up in space. It's the long <laughs> bubble. It's Hubble. Uh, and his first Phil. name, correct. Um, oh God, uh, f surname. It's a golfer, female golfer, surname. The second syllable. <laughs> So you moved on to 19, 10 what? to draw level, 11 to win. <laughs> Pass this to Roy, please. Yeah. Your 90 seconds start now, go. The new manager of Spurs. Christian Gross. Uh, tennis player shaved his chest. Oh. Andre Agassi. Yeah. Um, player for West Ham, his dad used to play for them as well. Frank Lampard Jr. Yeah. Uh, it's a rugby player. Rowan Atkinson played a historical character. Blackadder. Black yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And his first name. Oh, I think uh, Black. Yeah, uh, Blackadder. Todd. Todd. Todd Blackadder. Black yeah. Ooh. Oh. A Cameroon player. Cameroon player. Um, Roger Miller. No, second name. The last name is when you're on the uh, job. Uh, job. Job. Paul. Paul. What's his yeah. name? Something you want is something you desire. Desiree. Yeah. Desiree. And his first name is um, That's enough, Je isn't it? Uh, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Yeah. Joseph. Desiree. Um, <laughs> uh, he's a Paul player. Um, fictional but Panny. Uh, it's <laughs> Minnesota Facts. Thank you. <laughs> um, Keep going, keep going. This is an athlete. His first name is one of the Argonauts, leader of the Argonauts. Jason, Jason and Monkey. His brain. second name is first first part of his second name you'd probably associate with Gary. Jason Gary. Is. No, no. Jason. Not not very interesting. Jake Dull. 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 Yeah. Dull. There's something is with oh. you. There's Tedious. Something, is, something is Dull force. force. Yeah. A snooker player. First name is So at the end of that round, Gary's team have 16, but the winners this week are David's team with 19. <laughs> so our thanks to Gary, Rory and Phil, David Lee and Sharon. We were off to persuade Rod Stewart to do a 50-date tour at Old Trafford. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Nick Hancock. They think it's all over. It is now. Stay with BBC One. Comedy next. Michael Parkinson shares his worst nightmares with Paul Merton for Room 101.